Namaste everybody, welcome to Game Factory. This video is about how I created advanced torch holding mechanics in Unity. This is also a tutorial on how you can achieve the same thing and also the same method is going to work for holding flashlights or any other objects in your game. I do not want there to be any limitations for asset files, so you can go get them right now. The link is in the description. If you'd like to use them in any of your project, then you can use them, alright? So without wasting any more time, let's get to the content. The first step was to get animation for holding the torch. I made a simple torch holding stance in Blender, only one from animation and exported it to Unity. If you wonder about what is Blender, then it is an open source software to do digital arts. The main thing I use this for is to create 3D assets, to design levels, creating characters, rigging and animation and lot more. And the best part is that it is completely free. I will be making tutorials for both Unity and Blender on how we can use them to make games. The second thing I did was, I made these two types of torches, one for the wall and other for hand. After modeling the 3D model, the process was to create textures where I created different variations of maps like diffuse, normal, roughness and emission. At last I made a package and sent them to Unity. Now the time is to set up the scene. I dropped the wall torch to the scene. For the hand torch, I created an empty object at the side of the hand bone and named it Alice's Weapons and there goes the torch as it's held. The third step was to create fire VFX for game. Creating fire particle for the game was an important part because we do not want to mess the beautiful look of our final product. I did some research on creating great looking fire particle system and I came with these results. By keeping the performance in line, these two different fire particles were made. One for wall fire holder and other for hand thoughts. The process was to create a texture sheet in Photoshop and use built-in Unity particle system to generate particles. Texture sheet is basically a series of images inside one texture file that can be played frame by frame in Unity particle system. I'm not going to cover how to make particles in this video because this is not the main focus but for a quick preview, this is how the particle works. It has got three total particles, fire, spark and glow and also has one light component. Here are some quick details of fire. The emission rate over time is 10, shape is set to cone, y axis of velocity over lifetime has been set to 0.4 because fire always tends to flow upward, inherent velocity. Now this is the interesting part, alright do not skip this part. If you check this function, then the particles are going to copy the velocity of the apparent object. Set the mode to current and to create a short delay while following the parent, set the multiplier to 0.9. But keep in mind that this is only going to work if the simulation space is set to world. Ok let's move to other functions. Fade the color over lifetime. Increase the size over lifetime, 45 degree rotation over lifetime, assign the texture sheet and set the mode to grid. The tiles X and Y should be the number of rows and columns of your texture and finally the rendering mode is set to billboard. Same thing applies for all the firework but without any velocities. The coolest thing you can do is to play around with noise property to add some wind effect in your fire. Now the fire thing was done, it was time to set up the animator. Setting up animator controller was easy. I created a new layer and attached the animation of holding the torch. Following that I enabled IK pass and made a mask for left hand. After attaching particles to the object and adding some sound effects, it was finally looking good. Until I find this issue, the hand was getting inside things, which was not looking good. Fire getting inside objects is not the thing we want. The light was getting off and not so realistic. I thought this was going to be a big problem to fix. But finally I made a plan to use inverse kinematics to hold the torch and avoid getting into the wall. So I created a script and named it torch holding. And the first thing I did was added a couple of variables to set up the thing and I used the simplest way to handle IK controls. That is by using on animator IK function. There you can set weight for your IK hand, meaning the control rate over the IK. 
and the position. Simple as that. By just two lines of codes, my IK system was working. Now the time comes to stop the hand from going inside wall. After doing several tests and writing codes, I came up with a simple idea that is both good looking and does not affect the performance of the game. Here is the simple explanation. I used raycast method and some calculations to make this possible. I shoot the ray from center of the character towards the hand position, exceeding little bit further to detect the wall before the hand actually hits the wall. If the ray finds any object, then the position of hand was directed towards the hit point. Since it was getting attached to the wall, I added some distance to the hand. Now this was working fine. Until I find this problem, the hand was rotating of direction. To make it stay forward, I used project and plane function to get the new forward position. Project and plane is used to project vectors onto a plane. The first parameter is the direction from the vector towards the plane. In our case, the forward direction. And the second one is the normal of the plane where we want to project our new vector. By adding the distance and the new position, I finally accomplished good looking hand placement. With all that done, if there is no any contact, then the hand would go back to its normal position. Now that the fire was being held and the IK was working, I made a simple system to lit the fire and run it off. First thing I did was I added a box collider to the wall turrets and set it to be a trigger and set the layer to ignore ray cast or else our ray will detect it as a wall. And the rule was if the player is inside the collider and hits G key on the keyboard, then he gets the light. And again if we press G then we will turn the light off. I created a update method to note the input. But in the final build, I will use my input manager to keep track of inputs and buttons and remove the update method from this script. After doing all this work, the final result is out. It is working and looks great. Again, if you want project files, then the link is provided in the description below. And hopefully you get the idea and let me know if there is any confusion within this video. To finish this up, I was asked to make a tutorial on making characters strafe around the enemy like Dark Souls. So I may work on a project to do the thing and come up with the assets like animations and the tutorial. Finally, if you like the content and appreciate the time, then it would be very helpful if you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. With that said, thank you for making this to end. Until next time, goodbye and take care.